who are not here, uh, and you might want to go back and review this. Um, as I've been looking through your exponent rules proofs, I'm finding the biggest section that is uh, seeming to challenge people to fill it in is the quotient rule. So I wanted to go over the quotient rule just a little bit before um, I send you off to do some work today. Let me get my iPad ready to share. Okay, so the quotient rule. As you'll see on that exponent rules proofs document or the um, <clears throat> the notes that you've been taking with Mr. Kraft, who will be here shortly. Um, he had a commitment. The exponent rules proof or the quotient rule, I'm sorry, the quotient rule, um, shows things like two to the third power divided by two to the second power. And the filled out one is showing that what we would do in that case is show two times two times two divided by two times two. And then it shows that we cancel these, leaving just two to the first power. And then it has you looking at three to the seventh over three to the fourth. And they want you to, in the notes, I want you to write this out to show how tedious this becomes by doing this over and over. and that these would get canceled. But I wanna talk a little bit about why they get canceled. So let's go back to this first one. Because the, the exponent properties or the exponent rules are really just there to make our life a little bit easier. Oops, I just wrote a three when I meant a two. Um, they're meant to make our lives easier. They're shortcuts. And so I want us to connect this to things that we already know. We don't just cancel these out. We cancel them out because we know that I could also rewrite this as two over two times two over two times two over one. Where did the one come from? Well, it really came from anything times one is itself. And if I've got three twos in the numerator and only two of them in the denominator, what I want to break this up to show the different fractions where two over two is equal to one, two over two is equal to one, and then the final two over one, that means that this whole thing just equals two. What's really happening here that's the shortcut is I'm taking the exponent from the numerator. And then I'm taking the exponent from the denominator and I'm subtracting it. That's the shortcut part of it. Instead of writing this all out and showing that we know a two over a two equals an invisible one or gets canceled, and another two over two equals another invisible one and gets canceled, we're just showing that anytime we have an exponent in the numerator, with the same base as the number in the denominator that I can subtract them to simplify. It goes on to show us with x's. So the next one is x over 10, or x to the 10th power, I'm sorry, over x to the fourth power. And I already don't want to have to write this out. 10 x's, blah, 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 blah. It would go on further, right? What I do know is that I'm going to only have four in the denominator. I'll continue to write it. Let's see, I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
And remember these exponent properties or these exponent rules are really just there to give us shortcuts. And I know that this X over X is a one, invisible one. So is this, so is this, and so is this. So I can cross them off. What does that leave me with? Six X's in the numerator. So that's X to the sixth power. A much shorter version of doing this would be to just take this and say, look, I know that this is what it's gonna be in the drawn out long version. So I'm just gonna say X to the 10th minus four equals X to the sixth power. So as I'm looking through again, I'm noticing that for the most part, you all seem to be doing pretty well, but that seemed to be the one that was getting um, sticky for people. I want you to know that the ultimate goal is to get these exponent rules um, filled out, including the boxes towards the bottom where you're telling me why you think that those are what they are. To help with that today, I have added, and I don't remember if we watched this last year, to be honest, we may have, an, um, a flow cap video on exponents advanced properties. It doesn't cover all of them. It doesn't cover the quotient rule. That's one of the reasons that I um, just talked about it um, as example, but this does cover quite a few of the others. So I've assigned this with the vocab card and the quiz. I'll be honest, it's optional. You don't have to do it, but I think it would be helpful to at least watch the video and if you learn by going through these um, vocabulary exercises, I would suggest you do the vocab cards and the quiz as well. I wanna point this out, I'm sure some of you have seen it before, but the lyrics are here. If you click on them, you can go through and the whole lyrics are here. Sometimes it goes fast and it's just nice to be able to read along as you're going. Um, I'm a very visual learner. And so when I'm going through these flow caps before I assign them, I typically open this up in one window and then I play the video um, or I play it from here where you can just listen to it instead of watching the video. And I go along and follow the words because sometimes just reading them helps me make sense of it better. The other thing I wanted to point out is there is a quick review down here where you can click on it and it's gonna give you some questions What's another way of writing a to the negative third? And it's going to show that this becomes a fraction with a numerator of one and the denominator of a to the positive three. We don't like to have powers that are negative, so we always turn them into positives. That's one of its rules. So with that said, I am going to let you all choose a breakout room to go and work on FlowCab for the last 15 minutes. So if you could go ahead and change your names. So Mahalat asked, what would happen with the exponents if they were reversed? And that actually gets to the example that was in um, the flow cab there. Let me get back to my iPad. I wish it wasn't so many steps to have to be able to share this. So if I had x to the fourth over x to the 10th, is that what you mean, Mahalat? How would that work? OK, so that would end up being x to the fourth minus the 10. We would still do the same thing as our shortcut. And then we would get x to the negative 6. And then we have to go into the other rule where we don't leave negative exponents. I remember this as cross the line and change the sign. That was something that helped me remember this rule. I'm gonna take that now and I'm gonna turn that into a one over X to the positive six. Because whenever we have a negative exponent, if it's in the numerator, we move it to the denominator and make it positive. 
if it's in the denominator, we move it to the numerator and make it positive. Like I said, the phrase that sticks in my mind is cross the line, the line meaning the line in the fraction, and change the sign. So in answer to your example question, Mahalat, this is two rules here, right? First, I have the rule where we have subtracted the exponents. And then we have where we have a negative exponent, so we turn it into a positive, and this would be the answer down here. Okay, and Mr. Kraft is here. I told you guys he'd be here.